Okay. Thanks a lot for giving me such an important chance to attend this conference. Uh, I'm an assistant professor uh, from Southeast University in China. Uh, I'm also a postdoc uh, in Professor Alam's research group at the UBC. Uh, today, the topic of my presentation is performance-based seismic assessment of uh, highway bridges with superelastic SMA RCPRs and restraining devices. Uh, my, uh, my presentation includes the following five aspects. So, uh, recent large earthquakes have uh, revealed that the highway bridges in the regions of uh, high seismicity are prone to experience severe damages. As shown in these figures, we can see that many highway bridges were completely collapsed. From this, from this bridge failure, we can find that the typical damage of these bridges include the, the unsafety of bridge span and the uh, tear damage, failure of uh, bearing, shear keys, and connection devices, and pointing damages, and destruction of the patient joints. And among these uh, typical seismic damages, the first two high residual drift or collapse of bridge piers and unsafety of bridge spans are, are the two major causes of bridge failures. After such a failure, the bridge should be demolished and reconstructed. So how do we enhance the seismic performance of a bridge and a destructive earthquake? In the last, in the last several decades, various seismic strategies have been proposed, including the seismic control devices and the innovative structural system. For example, different kinds of isolation bearings and unsitting provision devices have been developed. Besides, some kinds of uh, newer columns have been proposed, such as the SMA RCPRs and the precast segmental rocking columns. However, only enhancing the seismic resistant capacity of one vulnerable component may be not always enough to improve the seismic performance of a bridge. For example, when the isolation bearings were used in a bridge, uh, the low lateral stiffness of the bearings may cause a larger, uh, a larger displacement of the bridge span. For example, the Yamatan Bridge in China it appears consisting of bridge spans, failures of bearings, and so the damage of uh, the pier. So it is important to use the restrainers for an isolated bridge. However, when the Regenerous devices were used in the bridge. A larger seismic force may be transmitted to the bridge pier and cause larger damage in the pier. A big challenge, how to protect both the vulnerable components and the bridge system at the, center, uh, at the same time. Our research group pro uh, proposed a normal self-sensory bridge. We combine the isolation bearings and the SMA RC peers and SMA keyboard restrainers in one bridge. Such, it can be expected that the unsitting of bridge spans, residual drift of a peer, instability of bearings, and the pointing damage can be effectively prevented. Our research group have uh, develop a uh, uh, design method for SMA, R uh, SMA RCPRs. So in this part, I will mainly focus on the design methodology for SMA keyboard juniors. This is the seismic design guidelines. We can see that different guidelines provide different standards. <clears throat> and the, cu the current regional design procedure were proposed for the non-isolated bridge. In other words, the dynamic interactions between the superstructure and the substructure in isolation bearings cannot be considered. 
So, a new regional design method for isolated bridge is necessary. Uh, to consider the dynamic interaction between the superstructure and the substructure, a simplified two degree of freedom model was developed. Here, the governing equations of motion for the girders and the piers were provided here. This figure and this equation can be used to uh, determine the configurations of the, SM, uh, of the keyboard general. Uh, here, uh, this method can be used to uh, design uh, different kinds of uh, restrainers. So the, config the configurations of the keyboard restrainers include the horizontal angle, the, the initial length of the keyboards, and the uh, vertical length of the uh, keyboards. And this figure and this equation can be used to calculate the required force in the keyboards. Okay, a flow chart is provided here to determine the configuration of the restrainers. And this flow chart can be used to calculate the required force in the restrainers. And then we can calculate the number, the required numbers of restrainers for a specific uh, breed. After proposing the uh, design methodology, then we should uh, verify the effectiveness of the SME keyboard tuners. Here, a three-span simply supported bridge is considered. Is considered. This is the relative displacement between the superstructure and the substructure. This is the fragility of the uh, bridge. We can see from the result the restrainer can effectively prevent the unseating problem. Compared to steel and the CFRP keyboards, the SMA keyboards can make the bridge less vulnerable. We can compare it with these two figures. In order to properly design the SMA keyboard trainers for an isolated bridge, a fractional factorial analysis was conducted to identify the significant level of the key parameters. Here, the key parameters were chosen according to the design methodology. And then a multi-criteria optimization method was conducted to optimize the design of SMA keyboard juniors. Some results were provided here. Uh, this is, this figure showing the interactions between two key parameters, and this table shows the five best and three worst SMA keyboard juniors for the for the considered bridge. From this result, we can identify the optimal values for each key parameter, uh, which can be used to optimize the design of SMA keyboard genius. As we know that the initial, the initial cost of the SMA material is much higher than the steel materials. So our research group have conducted a series of researches on the long-term loss of an isolated bridge with optimized SMA keyboard juniors. This is a follow chart. And uh, in, in our studies, we have compared the influence of the, uh, different kinds of uh, restrainers. For example, the steel, FRP, and SMA restrainers on, on the isolated bridge from the long-term seismic loss and the cost-benefit ratio, we can find that the SMA restrainers can help the system lower long-term seismic loss. We can see this figure. This is the SMA keyboard restrainers. And the bridge retrofitted with fiber speed SMA restrainers perform much better. Here, we considered two different kinds of uh, SMA lawyers. As mentioned earlier, 
The restraint of the camp ruins the bridge from experiencing larger displacement. However, the bridge piers may experience more damage due to, due to a larger seismic force transmitted by the restrainer to the pier. So our research group proposed such a novel bridge, uh, no bridge column. The, the RC piers were reinforced with the SMA rebars in the plastic heat region, and the SMA cables were used to connect the superstructure and the substructure in the longitudinal direction. Here, this, this is the follow chart for, the, uh, for designing the, such a novel bridge system. This is the SMARC pier, the design methodology of the SMARC piers. So this, this method, uh, following the study by Dr. Biller and Professor Lambs, uh, of this, this paper. And then a typical a three span isolated bridge was considered in our study, and a numeric model uh, was developed in OPCs. In order to assess such a novel bridge system and a destructive condition, a total of 21 near fault ground motions were considered in our study. Four bridges are considered. For bridges two and three, only one enhancement was considered. For example, in bridge two, the bridge span uh, were supported by the SMA RC piers, and in bridge three, the SMA restrainers was used to limit the relative displacement. And in bridge four, two enhancements were considered. From the bearing responses, we can find that the bearings in bridge four, this one in bridge four, have the smallest peak and residual deformation. And only using the SMA RC piers, we can see here, cannot prove the greater from larger displacement. And this is the deck acceleration. We can find that the SMA RCTRs in bridge two here can decrease the deck, deck acceleration. Uh, this, is, this is because that the stiffness, the stiffness of the SMA RCTR is lower than the RCTRs. The SMA restrainers may increase the deck acceleration. This is because that the SMA restrainers may increase uh, the literal stiffness of the bridge. And the peer responses uh, are provided here. We consider the deformation at the top of the peer and the base shear. So from, the, uh, for, from these figures, we can find that Using SMERC here can enhance the self centering capacity and reduce the residual deformation of bridge piers. However, only using the SM restrainers may increase the residual deformation. We can see here a large res residual deformation after the earthquake. This is the base shear. The SMERC piers can reduce the Bit shear of the bridge pier. We can see here, and the SMA restrainers may cause a larger a bit shear in the bridge pier. <clears throat> so from the structural responses, we can find that the bridge fall performs better than the bridge, that the bridge is uh, equipped with only one enhancement. In order to further uh, verify the effectiveness of the proposed novel bridge system. Uh, the seismic fragility analysis is further conducted. Okay, this is the uh, uh, fragility of the novel bridge. We can find that the SMARC tiers or SM regeners can render the bridge system less vulnerable. The, the red line and the blue line. And only using SMA RC piers or SMA restrainers in a bridge could not effectively enhance the seismic performance of the bridge compared to bridge four, compared to the bridge four, the purple line. 
So, uh, from this figure, we can uh, we can uh, conclude that the bridge fall has a considerable advantage to protect the bridge against uh, larger earthquake events. A brief conclusion is provided here. Uh, our main contribution is to propose a novel self-centered bridge system. And from a series of researches, we find that the proposed novel bridge system having two enhancements is more efficient than the bridge with only one enhancement against destructive uh, earthquakes. Okay, thanks for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thanks. Thank you, Lee, for your nice presentation. The floor is now open for questions. I have uh, two questions uh, to Dr. Lee. Uh, first of all, thank you, Dr. Lee, for this nice presentation. <laughs> I just have uh, two questions. The first is the, when you did put the fragility equations, how did you compute the, the dispersion of the capacity, the beta sub C? Uh, for this one? Uh, no, no, down, down, down. The fragility, sorry. I will find the fragility. Yeah. yeah. So there's. Uh, I did, yeah, I didn't show you the, uh, uh, this value here. Uh, in fact, uh, I. Mm, I did my. I calculate these values uh, following the study Dr. Billard paper. Uh, Dr. Dr. Billard published two paper, two papers on the Journal of Structural Engineering. They have uh, uh, they have calculated these these values for SMRC peers. Okay, I see. But like, shouldn't be just only applicable for a bridge peer that has the set memory alloy. But in your case, you had different combinations. Of uh, some of them had these SMA restrainers, so so the capacity, like the dispersion of the capacity that was obtained from Dr. Villa's research, is applicable only to bridge to one type of bridges, which has the SMA, right? Yeah, yeah. In your case, you had four bridges, so so my concern is the dispersion beta C might not be applicable to all cases. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is one. Uh, the second question is just if you go to the open seas model. Uh, uh, I just have a question like, uh, how did you capture the the bond slip effect? Uh, I can't see like. Uh, uh, how, sorry? Did the, how did you capture the effect of the strength penetration, the bond slip? The bond slip? The bond slip? Yeah. You said this one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, in fact, this uh, I didn't I didn't show in the bond slip. He, oh, maybe this one. Oh, uh, sorry, it, it is not here. Uh, I cal I calculate it according to uh, an experiment uh, about the SMA rebars. Uh, uh, the, 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 I think you can you can check that that paper. Published uh, uh, in uh, published uh, by our research group. Uh, I think maybe you uh, you have you have read that paper. Uh, I forgot that. Uh, Dr. Biller paper published in uh, con construct construction and building materials. Maybe you can find it. I yeah, followed. It yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I followed constant. followed that paper. So basically, it was a rotational sprint that has a constant stiffness. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you. Okay. So I have a question. Yeah, please yeah. go ahead. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lee, for your nice presentation. I have just one question. I was wondering, like, whenever we use SMA rebar in the bridge pier, it causes some of the stiffness reduction compared to the regular steel. And then when you further use isolation bearing, so did you see any combined effect of these two additional flexibility on your overall response of the bridge? Uh, sorry, you said I combined the SMA, uh, SMA, uh, SMA RCTRs and uh, work? Like uh, you have a lead rubber bearing in your bridge system, right? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so whenever you isolate your bridge, it already has a more flexibility compared to a non-isolated bridge. And then in addition to that, when you provide SMA rebar, uh, it adds uh, somewhat more flexibility into the bridge. Like, did you see any combined effect of this two added flexibility on the overall response of your bridge? Did you notice anything? Or? I, didn't, I didn't do this work. I think it, it seemed very intuitive. Mm -hmm. maybe, we, maybe I can work uh, work on this uh, work on this research. Maybe we can find a more interesting findings. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I, like going back to Dr. Billa's comment, uh, you did observe uh, more response, right? High, higher response, mm -hmm. right? When mm -hmm. you are using mm -hmm. Reach Four. And mm. also uh, the same comment, we just see that uh, Saif mentioned. I think uh, we had a discussion that you need to actually do another research to actually find out those beta Cs to confirm that mm -hmm. whether these are valid. But this is, yeah. these are very good comments. So thank you, Dr. Lee, for your nice presentation.